Hey everyone, it's Marlo and Megan, and we have a tough, tough question to ask you. Let's think about this. An out-of-control trolley is barreling down the track at a high speed straight towards the family of five who are stuck on the tracks. You see a lever across the way which would, if pulled by you, switch the tracks to avoid killing the family. However, the new track option would send the trolley barreling towards one unsuspecting person. Given the choice, would you pull the lever to save the five people at the expense of one person's life? As long as you're not a psychopath, you feel multiple different emotions in what is right and what is wrong to do. Our human nature, in the simplest form, pulls us in one direction, forcing us to follow our morals. However, not everyone feels morals are our innate guidance and choose to ignore them. This brings us to the extremely immoral world that exists in Margaret Atwood's novel, Works and Faith. Before we dive into the corrupted world of the new Homo sapiens sapiens, let's review the basic plot. We hear the story from two different narrators who are also the same person, Snowman and Jimmy. Snowman exists in the post-plague world with the Quakers, while Jimmy lives in the pre-plague world. In simpler terms, Snowman is present while Jimmy is past. The first time Jimmy is introduced, he is a young boy living in the Genique compound. Here we gather a sense of the type of world they have developed with the scientific breakthroughs they have discovered. He was taught that the technological advances were good for society, no matter how immoral the situation was. We follow Jimmy through his adolescent years and watch him blur his morals further as he befriends Crake, a polymath prodigy whose own scientific thoughts skip morality altogether. We see both Craig's immorality and genius at work as he opens Jimmy's eyes to the horrors that exist just behind the scenes. They currently live in a world with the ability to cure nearly any disease, solve the natural process of aging, and replenish depleted resources with scientific creations. With all of those advancements, Craig questions exactly why there are still diseases going on and until he, just, he stumbles upon an epiphany. Compounds like Gen Inc., Healthwiser, and Rejuvenescence depend their entire success off of sick people in order to cure them. We'll look specifically at the conversation Jimmy and Craig had. Now suppose you're an outfit called Healthwiser. Suppose you make your money out of the drugs and procedures that cure sick people, or else, better, that make it impossible for them to get sick in the first place. Yeah. So what are you going to need, sooner or later? More cures? After that. What do you mean, after that? After you've cured everything going. Remember the plight of the dentists? After that new mouthwash came in, the one that replaced plaque bacteria with friendly ones that filled the same ecological niche, namely your mouth, no one ever needed a filling again, and a lot of dentists went bust. So? So, you're going to need more sick people, or else, and it might be the same thing, more diseases, new and different ones, right? Some stands to reason. Don't they keep discovering new diseases? Not discovering. They're creating them. This becomes a key part of the novel because it gives the reader an insight to Craig's thought processes and inspiration for his plague. Then, the titular character, Orcs, makes her debut to the readers. She is Jimmy and Craig's main love interest, who stood for all things beautiful and pure. She brought a sense of purpose to Jimmy's life and is the main reason Jimmy feels responsible for the Quakers. She specifically asked him that if anything should happen to her or Craig, to watch over them and protect them. Since we have briefly reviewed Jimmy and Craig's friendship, we understand that Jimmy would do just about anything that Craig asks him to because of how jealous he is of Craig's unwavering intelligence. Now, naturally, when Craig asks Jimmy to join his team to advertise a product for immortality, Jimmy automatically says yes. He explains immortality is as no longer being afraid of death. He goes on to say that human beings will never be able to be immortal because... They see death approaching and become fearful of the effects. Craig solved this problem when he created the Krakers, new beings that look perfectly like perfectly sculpted humans, but without the flaws of human nature, like the fear of death. Therefore, these beings are immortal. Now, as we approach the end of the novel, the event that we've had sneak peeks into the entire book finally is described. The pills that Jimmy helped Craig advertise have been distributed by orcs, and soon enough, Jimmy discovers the true effects of them. As human beings begin dying, Jimmy takes safety precautions and locks himself with the Krakers, locking Oryx and Craig outside the airlocked compound. When Jimmy lets them in, Craig kills Oryx and drives Jimmy to kill Craig out of rage, completing Craig's well-thought-out joint suicide. From there, Jimmy stays safe inside the airlock as the plague kills the entire human race. When the last people die, Jimmy decides to emerge and meet the Krakers. They travel far from paradise and begin building their new home on the ocean shore. 
For a novel, Oryx and Creek was extremely symbol heavy. Nearly every single item that Jimmy or Snowman found, used, or even mentioned or alluded to symbolized a deeper meaning in some way, shape, or form. We'll focus the majority of our video on symbols because of this. First, let's look at time. From the very first page of the novel to the very last, time was mentioned to symbolize how Jimmy saw the world around him. His watch that he wears as snowman is broken, showing that how even though time is passing, it feels as if it had been stopped, and therefore it's meaningless because he's alone, with no one around to spend time with him. At the end of the novel, as snowman walks towards meeting the first people in months since the plague killed majority of them, he describes it as zero hour, symbolizing how time has started once again. Moving on from time, who could that be? To a delivery for a special look into the immorality of Orbs and Crate. What could we possibly have here? We have some sunglasses. But they only have one shade. Described on the first page, Snowman wears sunglasses that only have one shade, leaving one eye with a tainted view, while the other remains untainted. This symbolizes Snowman's mortality after accepting the results of Crake's project. He sees the murder of not only the human population, but also of his loved orcs, as immortal, as immoral, but does nothing about it and instead simply accepts it. His morals are there, on the innocent side of his glasses, but he ignored them due to the tainted side. In the rejuvenescence compound, Snowman finds new sunglasses with both shades intact, and this part of the story is when he fully understands why Craig did what he did. Putting all his morals aside, at the end of the novel, he takes his glasses off to greet the new humans, allowing him to see the world with morals for seemingly the first time. The entire novel's purpose is a look into humans' tendency to be immoral. Immorality is also symbolized by mud and blindness. The only truly moral beings in the novel are the Krakers, because Krake specifically took out any flawed human nature. To symbolize this, they have green eyes. In the context of the Krakers, their eyes represent innocence and inexperience. They are neophytes in their new home. Also, green represents a connection to the green world around them. In the context of humans, green symbolizes greed and envy when Craig's and Oryx are mentioned. Craig's color was green, and it represented the malicious intent in his eyes. Also, it could show Snowman's jealousy of the life the Krakers live, a life that's not burdened by the flaws in his human nature and their innate morality. Now onto the main themes of Oryx and Craig. There are four main ones we will discuss. Chaos, the devolution of language and culture, the battle between the scientific and natural world, and human nature in itself. Chaos exists from the very first to the very last page of the novel. The most obvious instance that Snowman sees the world around him as chaos was, as he described, his theory of creation for the Krakers. He sums up that the pre-plague world as was one where chaos existed and then described to the Krakers that Oryx and Crake worked hard to remove all the chaos from their lives so that they could live peacefully in the post-plague world. Snowman is seemingly the last human to know and understand all of the historical events that led up to the Crakers' existence. Over the course of the novel, this can be seen burdening Snowman as he often rattles off a myriad of seemingly unrelated words. Snowman is the most knowledgeable person in existence at this point, but is quickly deteriorating as all traces of past human culture and language are erased from the face of the earth. The world they live in is so technologically advanced, the natural world seems to no longer exist. Orcs and Crake both represented one side of this war, orcs representing the natural, while Crake was the scientific. They worked to stop the natural process of life and aging with science and drugs while the laws of nature worked to fight against it. So, would you pull the lever? Most would, because the five lives is worth more than the one. Some would not, because simply staying uninvolved means that they are not guilty for any death. If there were to be a third option, and I'm sure Craig would figure out a way to mastermind it, Craig would choose to kill all six people, showing just how immoral he is. His human nature no longer guides him, because he considers it as faulty, so he follows his science-minded brain. Jimmy, on the other hand, would pull the lever to save the most amount of people, because his human nature calls for a balance between life and death. Oryx, if she had the option, and she would force it to be this way, Oryx would volunteer herself, or she would not become in any way involved in any way. Her human nature is too pure, such like the Krakers. So, would you pull the lever? What side of your human nature would take over in that stressful instance? The moral or immoral side? Thanks for watching!